Hey, welcome to a new Android Beat. Here we are going to discuss view models. Now, this topic might sound a little bit trivial because, well, all Android developers know what view models are, but I assure you that we'll have a very interesting discussion here, so stick with me. We will start with this question. What's the role of view model in Android? And in my opinion, the best course of action to answer this question is to actually start with activities. So activity is a top level window controller. Its main function is integrating with the operating system through implementation of lifecycle methods. If this statement doesn't ring a bell for you or you think that it's incorrect, then I invite you to watch one of the previous Android bits where we discussed activities. Here we will take this statement for granted. So activity is a window controller and its main function is to implement lifecycle methods. Schematically, we could say that activity handles lifecycle. But in general, activity usually handles more stuff. It has UI logic inside it because activity, after all, should show some user interface to the users. And it will usually have some presentation logic inside of it. Well, not usually, but it can have. You can just pack all this logic into one single activity, and then activity will take on all these responsibilities and become what we call a God class. That's how many of us wrote Android applications at the very beginning of Android, at the beginning of our careers, and hopefully we moved past this point. And God class should be refactored and we should extract responsibilities out of it. One of the approaches is to extract presentation logic into a standalone class. So, hop, presentation logic went there. And how would a class that contains the presentation logic be called? Well, it will be called presenter. Very, very reasonable naming. And once we do that, we can schematically draw the following diagram. We have activity and presenter, and they talk to each other. Activity talks to the presenter, and presenter talks to the activity. And then we have something that we call model. Model is basically a source of data, generally speaking, something that performs the business logic, something that handles all kinds of application-specific, business domain-specific stuff. And the presenter talks to the model to fetch the state of the application. And how this architectural pattern would be called? Well, we have presenter, model, and activity that in this case will become kind of a UI component, will take on the responsibility of a view. And therefore, we call this presentation um, architectural pattern model view presenter or MVP in short. This architectural pattern was exceptionally popular some five, six, seven years ago in the Android ecosystem. But of course, today it is considered outdated, even though it works flawlessly for many years. So that's model view presenter architectural pattern in a nutshell. Now, we have configuration changes in Android. And when config changes occur, some of our objects will be destroyed and then recreated from scratch, specifically activities. And since presenters are tied to activity life cycles, well, they will be destroyed and recreated as well. And therefore, activity and the presenter will be recreated on config changes. The problem with that is that presenter loses its state during config changes in this configuration. What kind of state are we talking about? Where well, this can be, for example, something that we fetched from the network, or this can be some in-flight asynchronous task that's being um, executed inside the presenter, for example, network request. All of that will be lost if the presenter will be recreated from scratch. In many cases, that's fine, losing presenter's state. But in some cases, individual cases, we might want to preserve parts of this state in order, for example, to improve the user's experience. How can we do that? So how can we retain presenter's state across config changes? And we have two basically large scale strategies for that. The first one is to retain the individual pieces of the state manually. That's, for example, what uh, on safe instance state method inside activities allows us to do. We can delegate this method call to our presenters and presenters will save their state. And then in on create, when we recreate the presenter, we can bind back the saved state to the new presenter. And this way we kind of preserve the state. Of course, there are drawbacks. For example, we cannot preserve some asynchronous call in flight call using this mechanism, but generally speaking, this works flawlessly. And another approach that we can use is to retain the entire presenter. So basically we take the presenter object and just retain it across configuration change. And then the activity will be destroyed and recreated, and the recreated activity will use the same instance of the presenter. And of course, in that case, presenter retains all its state, including this uh, progress uh, on some asynchronous tasks. And we actually want to concentrate on this approach right now. So how can we retain the entire presenter? 
Well, the first approach that we can use is to retain the presenter, store the presenter inside a retained headless fragment. So again, we have our model view, uh, presenter architecture pattern, activity presenter and model. And now we basically use a component called retained fragment. It's a fragment that we call set a retained instance uh, method on. And then the fragment changes its uh, life cycle and it basically will not be uh, destroyed and recreated on config changes. And if we put our presenter into this special fragment, then the presenter will be retained as well. Using this method, we can limit the scope of configuration changes basically to just the activity and the presenter is retained and therefore the state and the in-progress tasks that presenter uh, might be doing will be retained as well. Sounds great, but in practice, it's very complex, cumbersome, and this approach introduces a very high risk of bugs because fragments are not simple on their own. They have complex life cycles. And if you make them retain, then their life cycles become even more involved. And many developers were really burned by this approach, retain fragments. And therefore, it has been considered a bad practice all along. If you saw a retained fragment in a code base, you basically knew that, okay, you are up to some trouble now. Fragments were complex and retained fragments were double complex. And therefore, it was very, very difficult component to work with. And in many cases, it led to very complex bugs. And this approach using retained fragments has been deprecated and therefore you shouldn't use, well, you shouldn't have probably used it before and you shouldn't use it for sure now. The next strategy that we can try is to retain the presenter itself manually. Well, what's the difference between retaining it in a fragment and this one? In a fragment, we basically rely on the lifecycle of a fragment to retain the presenter. And here we just manually save the instance and then restore it later. And for that, we had this retain custom non-configuration instance method. Very long name, but basically what it does is storing some object on config changes and allowing you to retrieve it later when the activity is recreated. So here you see one example. When we retain this presenter, we save it. And then in onCreate, we either reuse the existing retained instance. And if the existing instance, if there is no existing instance, then we just instantiate new presenter. So the first time the presenter will be instantiated. And then after config changes, we will just reuse the retained instance. And this method was very simple and very reliable, but it wasn't available in fragments. For some reason, Android author decided that this method should be an activity, but fragments, since you could make the entire fragment retained, you didn't need this method there. Well, of course it was uh, incorrect because making the entire fragment retained was very difficult and very challenging. And I told you a very buggy approach, but retaining instances inside fragments like that would be absolutely great. But unfortunately we couldn't do that. And just like retain fragments, uh, this on retain custom on config instance is deprecated now, so you shouldn't use it. And the last strategy that we could try in order to retain the state of our presenters is to make all presenters inside our application retained by default. Basically, not just retain individual presenters that we are interested in, but all the presenters inside the app are retained by default. You don't even need to do much about it. And how would this approach look like? Well, we still have activity presenter and model, but now instead of using our class as a presenter, we roll out a framework, which we call view model. And if you extend your presenter from view model and instantiate it in a very special way, then you get this retained property by default. And then of course, again, activity is the only company that's recreated on configuration changes. Your view models survive config changes and therefore their state and their progress is retained as well. This approach is standard. So it works in activities, fragments everywhere. And this approach is officially supported. So Google recommends that. And therefore we can kind of count on this working in the long term, as opposed to you know, retain fragments and custom non-config instances, even though with Google, you never know. Now, interestingly uh, to note is the sentiment towards retained presenters over time. So imagine that that's our time axis and we start at 2008 approximately when the first version of Android was released and developers started working on it. And in 2017, view model was released. So if you'd like to retain your presenter using, let's say a retained fragment or custom non-config instance or some other hack before 2017, 
you will be screamed on. People would say, don't do it. Why do we do that? That's a bad practice. You introduce bugs, whatever. Basically, that was considered to be a very bad practice. But then in 2017, view models came around and immediately written presenters became the only correct approach to write Android applications. And of course, a very interesting question in this context will be, well, how could we write good, well-behaved, uh, you know, um, performant Android applications before 2017 without the view model? We did that for many years before 2017. And therefore, all in all, view models are just retained presenters. And of course, we could use retained presenters all along, but view models offer a dedicated API for this feature. And one interesting question to ask here in this context is, does view model actually offer any unique features? Is there anything we can do with view model that we couldn't do with, let's say, retained fragment or custom on config instances? And as far as I know, the only feature that ViewModel offers that you couldn't kind of get without it is this uncleared callback, which informs you that the containing the host activity or the host fragment is now destroyed completely and will not be recreated uh, in the future. Therefore, you can, let's say, clear the state and uh, perform all the cleanups. This is indeed a very handy and important callback. But I don't think that Google actually had to release an entirely new framework and basically rewrite all the architectural guidelines for Android applications to just add this feature. I'm pretty sure we could somehow add a similar <laughs> callback alongside, let's say, a retain um, custom non-config instance. But all of that is now water under bridge. Today, we use retained presenters. We uh, advocate for retained presenters everywhere. Of course, we do not consider any other possibility, which is like 180 degrees shift from what we did before 2017. With that, thank you for watching and I'll catch with you next time. Goodbye.